Alright, so in this video I'm just going to do a quick review of the Varvel brushless electric DC motor. So I got the 48 volt to 72 volt variant, um, 2000 watts. I'm going to build an electric scooter with it. So I had not much research, there wasn't much online as to what you get or what you should get. So I basically just went through heaps of reviews. This one looked alright. There weren't any Aussie reviews as well, so I thought it might be interesting to have one out there just to see a little bit more details to what you get. Um, I ordered this only less than a week ago and it's already here, so that's pretty mint. Um, I've just blanked out some personal details on the front of the box, there's nothing there, but we'll have a look and see what we get in the package. So for me, my initial design theory was to use a belt driven design just because it's quiet doesn't stretch and it's probably going to be easy to sort of manufacture at home um, this kit is supposed to come with or the, the kit that I ordered which is called if you go on AliExpress it's called set 2 is the 2000 watt motor 48 volts with a controller and there should also be a uh, throttle controller on here as well so you can wire in so as we open this up, as you can see, a fair bit of foam in here, just your regular garbage, and straight away, packaged fairly well as well is that little uh, Varvel motor there, so that little brushless DC motor. And I'll be honest, just off the bat, it's very heavy, which I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign, but um, I use a lot of induction brushless servos at work. And I'll tell you what, for its size, this is actually still quite heavy compared to some other sort of comparable types of motors. So I'm talking SEW, CMG, this is quite heavy. So for the size of it, um, I'm hoping, hoping that means I get good power. Now, another thing, uh, it comes with this sprocket on it, as you can see here. And I'll be honest, that's a little bit notchy. So I might actually have to pull those bearings out and just have a double check, but that is just off first first glance here. That is a little bit notchy. So not sure if I like that yet, but you know, just point to note down. So I've got the um, got the electric motor out here. Now, if you look for it further in the packet, um, so I've got this one here. This looks like yep. Throttle body, throttle controller. So this, this comes with a key. Um, I didn't actually have plans to keep this. I was gonna get another kit off eBay or somewhere just to have a look at that. Um, but I suppose this is a good start. So you get the key, little twist throttle here, which is fairly simple. Basic battery indicator. Um, I think the biggest issue I'm gonna have with this is actually gonna be um, the batteries I use, so I've actually ordered some batteries off online, but who knows how good they'll be. Um, key start, so this is this is just a grip. So this one here is literally just just a grip. There is nothing else extra to this. Probably won't keep that. I'll probably get some nicer grips. But um, if we have a look at this, got your keys on here. So this is just an isolator key. It's just an isolator switch for the controller, all that is. And then the key sort of just gives you that functionality. So if you were making it into a scooter, you had something to turn it on and off with. So two sets of keys, very cheap construction, uh, definitely not waterproof. So for what I'm building, uh, just to sort of scoot around Melbourne with, so I don't have to rent those Lime scooters, um, probably, probably want to be changing that pretty quickly. Hopefully it's a standard size here. So whatever you make, if you make a, make handlebars or anything. Hopefully you can just buy something else, swap it over. So just make sure whenever you do, if, if you're gonna keep the original controller, just make sure you get something with these plugs. So we've got a three pin and two pin plug. Yeah, that's just for you know, all your controls on that. So one will be battery display um, and the other one will be the actual speed control. So it's pretty simple. Uh, if we keep going through the package, we've got the rest of it sort of just dumped in here. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much. You've got the motor controller unit here. A bit like a VSD, but for 40, 48 volts. This one here on the front. Veva brand. Have a look at this. Beautiful. 
all your connections here. Um, you have a quick squeeze. I'll see if I can try and reverse that for the camera so you can read it a little bit easier. But we've got um, brushless DC motor controller, 48 volt power, 2,000 watts, rated to 34 amps, allegedly. So we'll see. So we've got um, low level. The low level just is sort of, I think it tells you, it, it'll, it'll tell you what's left in the battery, so battery capacity. So if you did upgrade from this, from this unit, which I'm guessing you're going to want to upgrade. If you did upgrade from this unit, you could get a smarter unit um, that'll tell you other information like um, battery voltage, battery capacity, uh, and the brake. Uh, if you are building a scooter, you'll notice online it's a little bit hard to find a belt driven wheel with a brake attachment on it. Now, I'm just going to end up making my own plates. I've got the drill press and everything. I'll just make my own plates. But if you're looking for something that will give you braking ability, but you can't find a hub and a wheel to match your project, um, this brake actually just works like an induction motor. So it's a, um, you, you'll just plug it in. Once you hit the brake switch, it'll just, I think it just reverses polarity of the motor and it gives you braking that way. It's called regenerative braking. Allegedly, it's supposed to put some juice back into the battery as well, but considering how much you're gonna use the brakes, I mean, you probably get not much for it. It's pretty standard technology, but it does give you a braking advantage without actually having a physical brake on it. So I'm gonna try that and see if it works. If it's no good, I'll probably have to manufacture a just a small disc brake anyway, but we'll, go, we'll, we'll see how we go with, with this regenerative braking. Apparently, Apparently that's supposed to work fairly well. Um, your general look at this, it look, it's very cheap. Look, it's, I think it's uh, galvanized aluminium and plastic. There's a bit here, if you have a, look, a bit of a closer look. Um, there's probably CNC holes, and you sort of, the tool sort of got caught here, where it's going to, it's sort of dragged over, which, you know, you'd expect that for something literally this cheap. I got it delivered for 120 bucks, so, and within a week. That's not bad. Um, last thing in the package, I've got nothing else left in there. I think we've got a set of instructions, very basic. Maybe not even, what have we got? Oh yeah, just a simple diagram. Basic diagram. There are actually measurements on there as well. So if you can, if you actually zoom in, um, there are actually measurements on here as well. So dimensions, so if you're gonna drill your holes for mounting the motor and etc. You can have dimensions on that. This is a toolkit. it looks like. I got some, uh, looks like high tensile, looks like high tensile cap screws, eight mil. Yeah, so we got, I betcha, they might not, might not be, they might just be painted. Like I said, all this stuff comes from China, so you don't know how good some of this, let me just see if I can get this to adjust. You don't actually know how good some of this stuff will be until you've got you know it in your hands. But have a look at that there. Uh, it's just a cap screw. It's black, so you'd assume it was uh, high tensile, but it might not be. Just buy your own. Go down to economy bolts, BJ bearings, somewhere. Just get some fasteners. A lot of this stuff's just going to be crap. Um, different sprocket. So you got a smaller sprocket on here, depending on what your torque is going to, what your torque requirements. Um, I guess I'm not going to be using a sprocket anyway. I'm going to go to belt drive, but I guess if it's in there if you need it. You've got this beautiful torque wrench here, state of the art. I mean, there, is, there really isn't anything you need. You can actually just throw, you'll probably throw away your entire snap on kit and just keep this in the toolbox, I reckon. This a pair of old pliers and when one screwdriver, you pretty much, you know, you're done. There's, that's plenty. Uh, throw that away, to a waste of time. You're just gonna end up damaging everything. Uh, so that's the kit. Um, there isn't really a lot, there's nothing else. The box is empty, empty box, nothing. I'm gonna chuck all the rest of this shit out. Now I'm gonna work on this project. So um, if from, from a perspective of designing and building an electric scooter, right? I was worried that this might be too large, this motor. So I, I haven't decided whether I mount it on the outside of the frame or if I try to make a cowling over the top and then have the wheel behind, um, 
Don't know how I'm going to do it yet. I might just mount it externally. I'm probably not going to use the scooter in the rain anyway. The rest of it will be waterproof because I'll, I'll be able to weld in box sections, seal it up. It'll be fine. It's not that large. It's heavy, but it's not that large. So if you can fit this, I'll just get a, um, I'll just get a tape. So your, your rough dimensions here, you've got about 135 across, just on the main housing. And you've got approximately, if I go here, 120 base plate. I'll just put this on here. Base plate, you're about 120, almost exactly. And you've got about almost 75 here. So look, nothing's exact. Um, I, I think if you were actually building, if you get, get an SCW motor, everything will be sort of exact. This is not quite exact. Um, your whole centers are about 55, about 55 mil, it looks like. Um, just measure everything you get. They're all gonna be slightly different, I'd imagine. They're not gonna be perfect. Um, there's a few, few forming blemishes in here where it's been stamped, where you can see it's got caught in the tools, but apart from that, not too bad. Welds on here, I mean, they look all right. I mean, nothing to write home about. Um, obviously, you don't know what kind of penetration you got here, but they're not too bad. They look all right. Um, but yeah, definitely, if you look down the front, just in this gap here, I don't know if you can if you pick that up. Look in that gap. Don't know how good the penetration is on those, but we'll see. We can always weld that back together anyway, if we have to. Uh, like I said, very notchy, very notchy here. I'm hoping that's just, I'm hoping that's just the rotation of the coil inside. But um, yeah, a little bit notchy. What have we got here? Yeah, there you go, 48 volt. 48 volt, max speed 4,300. Sorry, speed is 4,300, max is 5,400. Um, 2,000 watt. We'll see. Um, I haven't got a bench tester for this. I'm still waiting on a, um, on a battery, like I said, that's coming in. Um, but I guess we'll see. Um, another thing probably, I'll just mention this right away. Um, this motor mount is not square. So if I put this on my bench, my bench isn't perfect by a long stretch, but not by a long stretch, but this, this isn't square. Lucky it's aluminium. We can actually just sort of clamp that down, it might be all right, but yeah. Hope you found this useful. Um, let me know in the comments if you need any more information on it, you want to look a little bit deeper into it. Um, all this stuff here is all labeled, so once you go through it, it's, it's, it's pretty basic stuff. A lot of it you probably won't need. So you got here you got brakes. Now keep in mind, you've got brakes and you've got brake light. Not all labeled in English, by the way, so do a bit of research. This one, not labeled at all. Only Chinese, only Chinese. I've got brakes in English. I've got two brakes in English. I've got brake lamp. So, these two for brakes. Doesn't say, you don't know whether or not they're both for regenerative braking, for a front and a rear, for two motors individually, or you need both. I'll have a look. I'll just test it all with a multi and see what happens. Brake lamp, obviously that's your you rear brake, you trigger that however you want. Um, only Chinese. I've got indicator light, cool. I've got electric lock, which I would assume is just the isolator with the key. Um, I've got charging port. So the motor will plug directly into this. The motor will plug into this um, via these. These are your main phase wires. Motor will plug into that and then your charging will come off that. So you'll charge through the inverter uh, to the battery for the for the um, build. So that's what I'll be doing here. So I'm glad this stuff's in. If I can start sort of working out from my perspective how long this scooter is gonna be, plus your battery, which will, which will be here. Um, point of caution, if you are gonna buy a battery online, have a good look. So the one I purchased, I actually only looked at the reviews very late after getting, after already ordering the battery. 
Um, a lot of scam batteries out there. Lithium batteries filled with sand. Um, 12 volts instead of 48 volts. If you can afford it, what I would do would just build uh, a battery in series. So get four 12 volt batteries, lithium batteries with maybe a decent duty cycle. Um, adjust your build to accommodate a larger battery space and just get quality batteries. So battery world, battery zone. Um, I get all my batteries from RNJ batteries. Generally, they're fantastic. They're in, here in Victoria, you can go down to the one in Princess Highway in Dandenong, they've just moved. Fantastic service, they always give you a good price. Just do a little bit of research on the battery. If you've got a bench tester, which I haven't got, I might borrow the one at work and just see if this runs or not. Um, I'll, I'll add that to the video as well at a later date, but um, there isn't really much else in the kit to really talk about. Like I said, this switch here, I'll be honest, this is garbage. So if, if you can save a few bucks and not get this, I would. Um, you're going you're gonna to spend a lot of time building a project like this, um, welding a frame together, making it look good, uh, all your design phase. Design it around a controller that is better than this. It's, it feels alright, it doesn't feel that bad, but the form and fitment here, it's, it's not great. It's, and like I said, it's definitely not waterproof. So you get a little bit of water on here, it will be garbage. So just have a think about that. If, I got it because I thought this would be a little bit better than it is. Um, it just isn't. So if you want to make something nice, you want it to look a little bit, a bit more well made, um, don't don't use these. Plus, there's almost no grip on here. These are just, these are just crappy. All right, cool. Um, any more questions, leave a note in the comments. I'll, I'll get back to you. Um, follow the build as well. So I'll be building this over the next few weeks. Probably, I'm aiming to have it done before Christmas, provided everything comes in from AliExpress, but we'll see how we go. Thanks, guys.